You are listening to the North American service of Radio Moscow. Time now for Vladimir Posner with his daily talk. Hello, everyone. Something not many people in the West think back on is what the socialist revolution in Russia brought them. To how great an extent it affected their daily lives and continues to do so. For instance, the Soviet government was the first to establish the eight-hour workday. But that's just one item. It was also the first to introduce such measures as yearly paid vacations for all working people. It was the first to legislate retirement pensions. These measures were later adopted by just about all Western countries. They were too attractive for the man in the street to be ignored. So just remember who you owe this to, at least in principle. But there are a whole lot of other measures which, attractive as they may be, have still to be incorporated in the social structure of the Western democracies, as they choose to call themselves, in particular America. The quality of the sexes is one. As we know, the Equal Rights Amendment took 10 years to get off the ground and then flopped. Guaranteed employment is still as distant today as it was at the beginning of the century. Still, there are Americans who push for at least partial progress, and one of them is Mitch Snyder. Snyder became nationally prominent in the States when he went on a 51-day hunger strike last October, November, to make the government reconstruct Washington's home for the poor. After the elections, President Reagan promised to allocate $5 million from federal funds for that project. What generosity. I wonder how many shelters for the homeless could be built at the cost of one MX missile, or B-1 bomber. But that's an aside. Anyway, Mitch Snyder and his colleagues are now pushing for something much more ambitious, a nationwide law that would guarantee all Americans the right to shelter. Now, that is pretty good. I mean, just look. 209 years, minus a few months, after having achieved independence and proclaimed the universal truth that all people are born equal, the United States just may see it fit to provide the legal right for the homeless to some kind of shelter. The country that proclaims itself a paragon of democracy that boasts the highest living standard in the world, that proudly preaches to the world on its virtue and why everyone else should go American, pardon the vernacular, has finally gotten around to examining the plight of the poor, mind you, from what the Snyders of America hope for to what they will get lies a truly cosmic distance. Still, at least the idea has become public. In 1977, just 60 years after our revolution, we adopted a new constitution which, among other rights, guaranteed the right of every Soviet citizen to a home. Those 60 years began in a country ravaged by World War I and saw the further disruption of the economy during the Civil War, during foreign intervention. They saw the annihilation of one-third of the national wealth in World War II, the raising of 1,700 cities and towns, and 25 million people left homeless. And yet, when it turned 60 years young, this society was able to guarantee, not just on paper, but in fact, the constitutional right of every one of us to a home. In view of today's situation in the United States, the comparison is, I believe, valuable. 